bless America. Gotta let you know what's up. God bless America. Are you sleep or are you up? God bless America. Trying to hit you with the news. God bless America. Don't be no dummy, you're a fool. We got Kamala Harris on the menu today. We're going to react to this economic plan that she got for America. The same lady who caused the inflation. The same lady who got the borders wide open for any and everybody to come in here, man. And she got the nerve to want to say on day one, this is what she going to do. When she been in office for three and a half years with Sleepy Joe. This is ridiculous, man. It sounds like some communist party type of situation to me. <laughs> God, Lee, man, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. You cause the inflation. You cause everything. And then you want to come talking about on day one, this is what you're going to do. You must think the American people are really stupid. Really stupid. Just like you had Megan Thee Stallion up there twerking for a vote. And you got every black woman in America mad about that. I don't care what side you're on. I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever. You are pandering. You are pandering. And then you want to throw socialism communists in there you and your vice president because we gonna get on your vice president pretty soon you know what i'm saying he he got he 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 been to china several times i have done my research on him you know what i'm saying so what are y'all trying to do y'all trying to turn america into china or 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 or, or something like that that's crazy that's crazy but we about to get into this reaction man of Kamala Harris with her economic plan for America. Communism. The government wants to control everything. You better not make more than what the government say that you can make or you're going to get penalized. You know what I'm saying? Just bottom line. She's really showing who she is. You know what I'm saying? I got a video with her and her family, man, is, is, is communist. You know what I'm saying? Communist party type stuff, man. Her dad, everything else. So, y'all sit back, man. We about to get into this reaction, man. All right? Let's get to it. And thank you, Mike, for sharing your story. And and I'm just so sorry for what your family has been through. But you have, out of an incredible tragedy, done so much for the community. And you are such a role model. So thank you, Mike, for everything you do. Thank you, and good afternoon to everyone here. Thank you to all of the incredible leaders with us today, including my friend, the Governor Roy Cooper. Where is he? Here with his daughter. Every time I land in North Carolina, I just literally come. Hold on, hold on. Here she go. Here she go with that fake accent. In North Carolina. Boy, Kamala is... A damn chameleon. <laughs> Here she go. Man, y'all pay attention to this, man. Kamala is something else, boy. I tell you. Coming down the stairs of Air Force Two, I will shout to Roy Cooper. What number is it, Roy? And today he shouted 16, which is the number of times I've been in this beautiful state since I've been vice president. Thank your next governor, Attorney General Josh Stein. He's doing incredible work. He's going to be an extraordinary governor. Representatives Adam, Manning, Fushi, and Nickel, thank you all for your support, for your friendship, for your leadership. Chair Thomas of the Wake County Board of Commissioners, thank you for all that you do. And to all the leaders that are here today, including the students and instructors here at Wake Tech North. They got to sound like it's thousands and thousands of people there, but it's probably only about, maybe about 
about 250 people there. No way the size crowds that uh, Trump have. Anyway, man, let's get to it. Thank you all. So listen, um, this election, I do strongly believe, is about two very different visions for our nation. One, ours, focused on the future, and the other, focused on the past. We see that contrast clearly in many ways, including when it comes to how we think about the economy. Hold on, hold on. You said one for the future and one for the past. I think the American people like the past. And the reason why I say that, man, we was uh we was really prospering the past with, with uh Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? No wars, you know what I'm saying? It was it was no inflation. It was a lot of those different things, but the future man is looking kind of grim with Kamala uh the vice president. You know, we got the open borders, we got high inflation, prices are high, all of that. 20 million illegal aliens up in here. What kind of future is that? I don't want to be a part of that type of future. (laughs) You're right. It is a battle between the future and the past. And I think the past is a little better than the future that you're trying to give us. Scamala. So our country has come a long way since President Biden and I took office. At that time, we sadly remember the millions of Americans that were out of work. We were facing one of the worst economic crises in modern history. And today, by virtually every measure, our economy is the strongest in the world. Are you sure about that? Because the last time I went and got gas, man, it was almost $6 a gallon. Are you sure about that, Scamala? Are you sure about that? We have created 16 million new jobs. We have made historic investments in infrastructure, in chips manufacturing, in clean energy. And new numbers this week alone show that inflation is down under 3%. For real? For real? You mean to tell me when I went to Carl's Jr. today, I didn't pay $18 for a number one small? It was $18. And you talking about inflation did what? Because the last time I got that number one, when uh, when uh, Trump was in office, when inflation was down, it was about eleven dollars for a combo. Now it's eighteen dollars for a number one at Carl's Jr. Really, Kamala? For real? Boy, you are. I, anyway, let me let, let's get to it. And as President of the United States, it will be my intention to build on the foundation of this progress. Still, we know that many Americans don't yet feel that progress in their daily lives. Costs are still too high. You're damn right it's high. And it's because of you and Biden that the prices are high. Now you're going to do the little sob story. Your prices are high. You know they high. Come on, Kamala. And on a deeper level, for too many people, no matter how much they work, it feels so hard to just be able to get ahead. You got that right. If one thing you got right, you got that right. It's, 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 it's hard as hell to get ahead right now. Because you and Biden... As president, I will be laser focused on creating opportunities for the middle class that advance their economic security, stability, and dignity. It's been three and a half years. And now you're talking about being laser focused. 
What happened three and a half years ago? You wasn't laser focused when you got nominated and, and became the vice president. What happened to that? Look at that look on her face. Because she knows she's lying. Three and a half years ago, you should have been day one. You should have been laser focused to make the American citizens be prosperous. Boy, I, just listening to her, just listening to her, man. It's crazy, man. Let's get to it, man. Together, we will build what I call an opportunity economy. Opportunity economy. There are sure not any opportunities right now. You've been in office for three and a half years. Three and a half years. What happened to all the opportunities that you sold the American people to be able to be a, a vice president? Now, all of a sudden, y'all push Sleepy Joe out. Now you want to be this totally reformed person. We know your history, Kamala. We know your record. We know your record. You can't distance yourself from all the bad decisions that you made. Come on, Kamala. <laughs> this is crazy. An opportunity economy. Opportunity economy. I ain't never heard nothing like that in my life. Opportunity. Come on. And look at all the poor people back there looking like opportunity. I know deep down in their mind that they know that they struggling and it's all because this woman that they looking in the back of was the problem song and dance y'all song and dance that's what the democrat party do they song and dance you they they bring megan the stallion and cuevo and song and dance and twerk all over the stage you know what i'm saying all this woke stuff like come on man you can't you got you got world leaders that don't respect you. You know what I'm saying? You talking about some opportunity. You giving these world leaders that want to see the country do bad, they want to they want to do something to us. You giving them the opportunity right now. <laughs> this is sad. An economy where everyone can compete and have a real chance to succeed. Everyone, regardless of who they are or where they start, has an opportunity to build wealth for themselves and their children. And where we remove the barriers to opportunity, so anyone who wants to start a business or advance their career can access the tools and the resources that are necessary to do so. Kamala, we've been doing this. We've been doing this. If you're not good at what you do, you ain't going to get nothing. If you're good at what you do, you're going to get everything. Now you want to make a, 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 a level playing field for everybody. If you don't work hard, you don't get nothing. That's, that's how I was raised. And I'm quite sure that's a lot of a lot of American citizens was raised like that. You got to do something. You got to do it. Like Snoop Dogg said, you got to, you, you it, look, if you ain't good at it, then why would you even get paid? Or why would you even advance in it? You know what I'm saying? That's just the way the, the, the American, the, the Americans is. If you don't do good, you ain't getting nothing from it. But you hear you come with all this nonsense. <laughs> That's crazy, man. This is, this is, this is, anyway, let's get to it, man. I will focus on cutting needless bureaucracy and unnecessary regulatory red tape. And you should have been doing that. You've been, you've been vice president for three and a half years lying to the American people about Joe Biden's cognitive ability. You've been backing all his policies 
Now you want to distance yourself and talk about you just the savior of all this opportunity. You took all the opportunity away when y'all was giving away all these billions and trillions of dollars to these different countries, securing their borders, and our borders are wide open. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you just fake. You fake. And encouraging. <laughs> and encouraging innovative technologies while protecting consumers. And creating a stable business environment with consistent and transparent rules of the road. As president, I will bring together labor with small businesses and major companies to invest in America, to create good jobs, achieve broad-based growth, and ensure that America continues to define the future and lead the world. You're saying the same thing everybody been saying forever. You ain't saying nothing new. You keep trying to distance yourself from the from the catastrophe that you and Sleepy Joe caused. Like I said, man, you've been in office three and a half years. And all of a sudden you want to pull all this uh sparkle and 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 magic tree out your ass. And key, key to creating this opportunity economy is building up our middle class. What about the lower class? You so focus on the middle class. The lower class need help too. You know what I'm saying? I go out there to go feed the lower class. I go out to the homeless and all that homeless veterans, homeless U.S. citizens, and you focus on the middle class. The middle class is in the middle. They doing just fine. Focus on the lower class people, the, the, you know, people that don't have it. You know what I'm saying? Look at that dumb look on their face. That teleprompter is moving too fast. <laughs> it, it's, 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 man. Oh man, look, look. Only thing I can do and say is, Kamala, can't nobody believe what you're saying. You've been lying for three and a half years. You've been lying about your record. You know what I'm saying? You ain't you. You just been you just been destroying cities or city up north California. They can they can tell you. They'll tell you. Locking people up, black people up, you know what I'm saying? All this, like, it's just crazy. It's hard to even look at you to believe what you're saying. You know you're lying. It is essential. The middle class is one of America's greatest strengths. And to protect it, then, we must defend basic principles, such as your salary, should be enough to provide you and your family with a good quality of life. Well, it's not. Things are too high. Inflation is high. Prices are high. I just said the number one was at, at Wendy's or Carl's Jr. was $18. It's high. Come on, man. Fast food is supposed to be, be like if you're hungry, you go get you some fast food. Now it's a luxury because it costs so much. And you know why it costs so much? It's because of you and Sleepy Joe. You and Sleepy Joe. Y'all made it that way. What the hell? Such as no child should have to grow up in poverty. Well, they do. They do. That's the reality of it. You got rich people, you got middle class people, and you got lower class people. They do. They grew up like that. 
Just because you didn't don't mean that the next family didn't. Look at the look on her face. You know you're lying. Such as after years of hard work, you should be able to retire with dignity. And you should be able to join a union if you choose. Bill you should be able to, but you can't. You can't. You should be able to do all them things that you're saying, but you can't. We can't even see that right now. Take me, for instance. I work a nine to five job, a career, and I don't even see myself retiring. I don't even see myself. I'm going to have to work all my life to do the things that you saying that can be done. <laughs> Building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency because I strongly believe when the middle class is strong, America is strong. All classes need to be built up to make America strong, not just the middle class. All classes of people, Kamala. All classes of people, not just the middle class. I hope you look at this. I hope you hope you see this reaction because you need to know that all classes of people Make America strong, not just the middle class. So in the weeks to come, I will address in greater detail my plans to build an opportunity economy. And today, I will focus on one element that's on the minds of many Americans as they pay their bills at the kitchen table or walk the aisles of a grocery store. We don't pay our bills at the grocery store. And I don't know nobody to pay their bills at the kitchen table. And then you say in weeks to come, you can't tell us the whole thing right now. You can't tell us your whole plan right now. Look at the look on her face. We want to know the whole plan right now, not weeks to come. You trying to stretch this and stretch this and stretch this out. So you ain't got to do no interviews and all this stuff. You've been in hiding for the longest. Look at the people in the back. Look at them. The man on the right right there, that white dude, uh, he looking like, well, well, what's the plan? Look at the black bald head man right here. He like, wait a minute. What's the plan? So you want to stretch this out. We want to know right now, Kamala. We want to know right now. Look at the look on her face. <laughs> we want to know right now. You playing with us. <laughs> and that is lowering the cost of living. So every day across our nation, families talk about their plans for the future, their ambitions, their aspirations for themselves, for their children. And they talk about how they're going to be able to actually achieve them financially. Because look, the bills add up. Yeah, they add up and you know it. Look at that look on your face. Only thing we can do is make plans because... That's all we got. The way things are right now, as high as inflation is, we can't make plans for nothing. We trying to make a decision if we want to eat or we want to keep the lights on. And you know why is that way? It's because all these illegal aliens that we're paying for, all the trillions and billions of dollars in these sanctuary cities. I'm in a sanctuary city or a sanctuary state. I'm in California. You know what I'm saying? I work hard every day and my tax dollars are going to people who ain't did nothing for this country. But coming here with a handout, I'm sorry to say it, but that's just the cruel reality of it. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like you want the people that's coming over here to make those type of decisions. Forget the American people. 
You've been in the office three and a half years, and that border been open. You was the border czar, Kamala Harris. You was the border czar. We in this situation because y'all want these votes. I know, I understand. You ain't got to sit up here and keep explaining yourself. I understand why it is the way it is. And a lot of my friends, we out here struggling because of your decisions and your policies. You want to distance yourself and flip flop on everything that you talking about. Just like they say, you are a chameleon. You are a chameleon. Come a chameleon. That's your name, Scamala. Food, rent, gas, back to school clothes, prescription medication. After all that, for many families, there's not much left at the end of the month. I Why is that? Why is that? I'm going to keep on interrupting this video because why is that, Kamala? Why is that? Before y'all got in office, we can afford that type of stuff. As soon as y'all get in office, all these things that you're talking about that we can't afford, lower class, middle class, hell, even some people that got money, is killing our pockets. And you want to sit up here like you just got all the answers. You've been in here three and a half years. Now you want to come with the answers, which I don't, still don't think is good enough. You're not going to do nothing. Look at that look on your face. Look at the look. Boy, look at the look. What the hell? Look at the look. What the hell? <laughs> Boy, this is, this, is, this is funny. This is funny, man. Let's get back to it. I grew up in a middle class household. For most of my childhood, we were renters. You grew up in a middle class household, an Indian middle class household. You're not black. I don't care what you say. You're not black. You don't know nothing about the black struggle. And and for your information, we don't wash our collard greens in the bathtub. But anyway, let's get let's get to it. My mother saved for well over a decade to buy a home. I was a teenager when that day finally came, and I can remember so well how excited she was. I kind of understood what it meant, but we called her mommy. Mommy was so excited, it just made us excited that she was so excited. Later in college, I worked at McDonald's to earn spending money. Well, some of the people I worked with were raising families on that paycheck. They worked second or even third jobs to pay rent and buy food. That only gets harder when the cost of living goes up. When I am elected president, I will make it a top priority to bring down costs and increase economic security for all Americans. As president, I will take on the high costs that matter most to most Americans, like the cost of food. The cost of food. The food is high because of what? Why is food high? Inflation. Sending trillions and billions of dollars to different countries that ain't got nothing to do with American citizens, the middle class people who you talking about. That's why food is high. Energy high, all the jobs, and you don't want to. You 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 said, you know what I'm saying. You trying to run from banning fracking. That's what you said. That has a lot to do with energy. That's why all this stuff is high. You've been in office three and a half years, and you just figuring out that food is high. Kamala Harris. You're not fooling me and you're not fooling anybody on this channel, on this reaction video, watching this. It's high because of you and Sleepy Joe Biden. It's high. 
We all know that prices went up during the pandemic when the supply chains shut down and failed. Prices continued to go up when you and Joe Biden took office. It, it, it even went up even more. We was cool after the pandemic was over. Prices did come down a little bit. But when y'all got into the office and set your policies, it just went up even more. So don't try to blame it on uh, COVID-19. Don't blame it on that. Blame it on yourselves. We all see that. And those people that's behind you, they know, they know the real. They can sit there and support you and act like ain't nothing wrong or the, the prices of food went up because of COVID. The prices of everything went up because of y'all policies and what you believe in. Come on, man. But our supply chains have now improved. And prices are still too high. Exactly. They've been improved and the prices are still too high because of what? Look at, look at the look on her face. She rolling her eyes. She knows she's sitting up there gaslighting us. Oh, yeah, their prices is, is too high. You know why they too high. Come on, chameleon. Come on, scamela. A, lo a loaf of bread costs 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Exactly. And don't say before the pandemic. It went up when y'all were in office. Ground beef is up almost 50%. The same reason. When y'all came in office and start sending all this money and doing all that crazy spending, and when you had to decide and vote on inflation, that's why everything is high. Man, you got some people still on the plantation. I swear. People looking at this like, man, this was before the... No. It got even higher when they got into office. With all these millions of illegals coming in here and we paying for everything. We paying they we we're paying for their food. That's why our prices are high, because we're paying for their food, their housing, their medical, and everything else. Keep it real, Kamala, but I don't think you can. Many of the big food companies are seeing their highest profits in two decades. And while Many grocery chains pass along these savings. Others still aren't. And you talking about profit margins. They only making 1.8% profit margins. 2.8, 4 point, whatever. That's not a lot. These companies are barely surviving because the inflation is so high. Won't you do the real numbers and stop playing talking about they making all this money and they not. They not. If these companies was making all this money, uh, grocery stores wouldn't be closing. Fast food chains wouldn't be closing. 99 cent stores wouldn't be closing. Anything that you talking about that's making all this money, them companies wouldn't be closing. You got a lot of fast food chains that are closing. But you talking about they making a lot of money. You gaslighting. That wig on your head should be catching on fire right now. You know what I'm saying? Look at the look on your face. You can't even look. Y'all don't even know where you're looking at. The teleprompter on that side, because you damn sure didn't write this speech. You know what I'm saying? Your speech writer should have put the real numbers in there so you can read them, but y'all not going to do that. Y'all want to keep gaslighting the American people for real. Look, I know... Most businesses are creating jobs, contributing to our economy, and playing by the rules. But some are not. And that's just not right. And we need to take action when that is the case. So which jobs is not? Call the companies out. Because I think you're just saying something. Capitalism. This is, this is what... America is based off of it. We want to make money. If, you, if you're selling a good product, you should make all the money. If you're selling a bad product, then you need to go back to the drawing boards and make that bad product good. Here you come with that communism. Here you come. She about to break it down for you. Her true stands on the economy and what she planned to do. Y'all pay attention. 
at, at As Attorney General in California, I went after companies that illegally increased prices, including wholesalers that inflated the price of prescription medication. And also as Attorney General, you went, off, you went after a crime that wasn't even really crime. Like, we, like it, come on, you locked up so many people. You locked up so many people. Won't you say that part too? You know what I'm saying? Look at look how she looking. She knows she did what she did. She locked up black women and black men. But you talking about going after people who price gouge and all this stuff. You can't even you can't even tell us what price gouging is. Can't nobody say that. Because a company, if a company is buying something from, or getting something made from another company and their prices went up, don't you think the company who who People buying stuff from, they prices got to go up so they can make a little bit of money. Keep it real, Kamala. But you can't keep it real because you not you don't you don't even know what keeping it real mean. For real. <laughs> and companies that conspired with competitors to keep prices of electronics high. I won more than one billion dollars for consumers. Did you? Where the receipts at? Let's see that. So believe me, as president, I will go after the bad actors. You sure will, because you went after a lot of black people who you thought was bad actors, and you turned around with smoking weed yourself. Look at that look on her eyes. Look at, look at, look at how she's looking. You will go after the bad actors. That's one thing that you're going to do. Whether it's a small little thing or a small issue or a big issue, you definitely going to lock people up. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, let's get to it, man. And I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on pr price gauging on food. Price gauging, huh? Price gauging. Did you mean to say gouging or gauging? You gonna pass a first federal ban? <laughs> Boy, now you want now you want to tell us when how much we can spend to eat or the companies how much they can charge for the food that they manufacturing for us to eat. Like I said before, if a company is 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 paying a lot of money to produce this food don't you think that they're gonna charge us to be able to make a profit they're not working for free kamala they're not working for free and the reason why all this is happening i'm gonna keep saying it is because y'all caused this inflate this inflation your vote that you did you as a president of the senate i think that's what it is you cast that deciding vote to raise all these prices and inflation and all this stuff. Now you want to distance yourself from that. Tired of looking at that. Look at that look on her face. <laughs> My plan will include new penalties for opportunistic companies that exploit crises and break the rules, and we will support the rules, penalties, huh? You're going to cause food shortages. That's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to cause a black market of food that they're going to have, like, it's going to be like the dope game. You know what I'm saying? You're going to cause food shortages. You're going to cause long lines for people to get the essentials because Companies are going to back away from producing all this stuff. Famine, hunger, all of this stuff, Kamala. They got other countries that give you an example of what you're trying to put in order. Venezuela, Cuba, all these different countries, all these different places where they tried this type of government. 
and it's not working. But you ain't worried about it because you 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 got millions of dollars, right? When somebody come knocking on your door in your luxury uh, uh, community that you stay in, then you're going to realize what you did or what you're trying to promote is wrong. You're going to cause a lot of food shortages because the companies are not going to want to produce anything because they're not making any money. That's why they are in bit. That's why they are in business is to make money. Kamala. Scamala. Come on. I don't know what country you come from. Let me shut up. Let me shut. Let me keep it going. Smaller food businesses that are trying to play by the rules and get ahead. We will help the food industry become more competitive because I believe competition is the lifeblood of our economy. And it's going to be a lot of competition. It really is going to be a lot of competition. You worried about the small food places. It's going to be a lot of competition. And that's where the food shortages are going to come in at because it's not going to be a lot. You're going to make competition. You're going to make it. We're going to have to compete to be able to eat. Kamala, I don't get it. You should have proofread that speech that you given and said, wait a minute, this don't sound right. But like I said before, you got millions of dollars, so it ain't going to really affect you. You're not going to, you're not going to like, if you have any businesses, Kamala food businesses, are you going to do the same regulations on the things that you own? Or are you going to be like Gavin Newsom and say, I'm only going to pay $16 an hour for my company, but charge everybody in California $20 an hour minimum wage. Are you going to be like that? Because you are from California, just like Gavin, Gavin Newsom. In the words of Donald Trump, Gavin Newsom. For real. More competition means lower prices for you and your families. It's not going to be lower prices. The prices are going to get higher. Because it's so much competition. It's going to be less food. The companies are going to want to make money. They're not going to just work for free, Kamala. Look at that look on your face. Because you know you're wrong. Now compare what Donald Trump plans to do. Come on, let's compare it. He wants to impose what is, in effect, a national sales tax on everyday products and basic necessities that we import from other countries. That will devastate Americans. It will mean higher prices on just about every one of your daily needs. A Trump tax on gas. What's wrong with taxes? At least it's bringing down the, it's bringing down the inflation. You know what I'm saying? All the money that y'all sending out everywhere is raising Inflation. Come on. We've been paying taxes on everything. So you're going to take away the taxes on everyday stuff so we can continue to be broke. You want everything that you it's this is just is just straight communist type of stuff. For real. The government wants to control everything and you want to sell this to the American people. It's, it's weird. A Trump, a Trump tax, tax on, on food. food. A, a Trump, Trump tax, tax on clothing. Why you got to say a Trump tax? It's a United States tax. A, a Trump, Trump tax, tax on over-the-counter over medication. medication. And you and know, know, economists have, have done, done the math. math. Donald, Donald Trump's plan would cost a typical family $3,900 a year. At this moment, when everyday prices are too high, he will make them even higher. As president, I'll tack and take on the issue of the cost of health care. As attorney general, I took on insurance companies and big pharma 
and got them to lower their prices. You've been, you been vice president for three and a half years. Where is all this stuff that you're talking about? Why you haven't did any of this stuff? Why haven't you did any of the things that you're saying? You're worrying about a Trump tax. It's not Trump tax. It's just the tax that we've been used to paying. When Trump was in office, everything was cool. I didn't have to pay $18 for a number one at uh, Carl's Jr. It was 18 plus tax. You understand what I'm saying, Kamala? You keep on talking about Trump tax. We have to pay all these taxes for all the money that y'all are sending out. Y'all sending out trillions and billions of dollars of tax paying citizens money. Look at the look on her face. Come on, man. I don't I, look. You talking about day one when you get in. Day one was three and a half years ago, Kamala. You got all those people back there behind you and all those people in that room with you, all the 250 people, you gaslighting everybody. We already know what you did to work your way up to the top, but I ain't even going to get on that right now. <laughs> Let's go. And together with President Biden, we've gone even further. We capped the price of insulin at $35 a month and the total cost. Y'all didn't cap nothing. Donald Trump capped that. Just like you trying to steal his no tax on tips. Y'all want to take credit for everything somebody else did. I don't care what nobody say on here in the chats or whatever it is. Say what you want to say. But you're stealing everything. You want to take credit for everything. But you don't want to take credit for the high inflation and all high prices of everything that we're that we're paying. Take credit for that. Don't come here talking about what you're going to do day one when you've been in office for three and a half years. <laughs> That's crazy. And the total cost of prescription drugs at $2,000 a year for seniors. We let Medicare negotiate lower drug prices for seniors. And just yesterday, and just yesterday, we announced that we are lowering the price by up to 80% for 10 more life-saving drugs. When Joe Biden and Trump had that debate, when Joe Biden stumbled and said, we finally beat Medicare. What did Trump say? Yeah, you did beat Medicare. You beat it to death. <laughs> oh, Lord, this is this is outrageous. This is outrageous, boy. Mm -mm -mm. Look at her face. You gaslighting everybody. I can see the flames coming out of your eyes, Kamala. Ridiculous. <laughs> Medicare for all, right, Kamala? But now you're talking about uh, you didn't mean that. You know what I'm saying? You're going back on your positions, right? You do anything to get a vote and to win. Anything. That look on your face, it just irks my nerves. Goodness. And I pledge to continue this progress. I'll lower the cost of insulin and prescription drugs for everyone with your support, not only our seniors. And demand transparency from the middlemen who operate between Big Pharma and the insurance companies who use opaque practices to raise your drug prices and profit off your need for medicine. Two months ago, I announced that medical debt will no longer be used against your credit score. Okay, well, that's a good one right there, and I ain't going to hold you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to hold you. That's a good one. People got a lot of medical debt. 
and you know, and it, and it does affect your credit score. Now, that's a good one. I'll give you that one, Kamala. All right, I'm gonna give you something. Now, I ain't, I ain't totally against you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a common sense type person. Now that that's a good one. All right, I salute you for that one. I salute you for that one. All right. Matter of fact, I salute you for that again and again. That's it. Let's go. And I will work as president with states like here in North Carolina, Roy Cooper, thank you again, to cancel medical debt for more and more millions more Americans. But, but, if you're going to cancel the debt, Who's going to pay for it? Who's going to pay for it so it's like a, a double-edged sword? You're canceling it, but the taxes, the tax-paying citizens is going to have to pay for it. So uh, the good thing is you're talking about taking it off your credit, but somebody got to pay for that debt. So it, it is what it is. Somebody got to pay for it. The credit score is cool, but somebody got to pay for it. Just like we paying for everything else with our taxpaying citizens' money. All right? As for Donald Trump, well, he wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which 45 million Americans rely on. 45 million Americans rely on it for health care. That would take us back to a time when insurance companies could deny people with pre-existing conditions. We all remember what that was. Okay, I hear what you're saying on that. But just a few months ago, you were saying, uh, don't nobody need their own uh, private insurance. It was going to be Medicare for all. Like, you know what I'm saying? No private insurance. So what about the millions of people who love their doctors? What about that, Kamala? But, but, but you, you uh, backed off that statement, right? You've been running on that forever. Let's cancel that. You know, let's let's get on. Let's 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 cancel the uh the private insurance and get everybody the same insurance. He's a hypocrite. You you you're contradicting yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're contradicting yourself. What? You're contradicting yourself. What? Let me say it again. You're contradicting yourself, Kamala. What? What the hell? <laughs> Anyway. And, and remember, and this is why we're not going back, because we do remember, he tried to cut Medicare every year he was president. And you tried to cut a, a millions of people's private insurance. Look at her face with the tongue hanging out of her mouth. We know what you did with that tongue, Kamala, to get where you at. Anyway, let me get back to let me get back to threatening a program that tens of millions of seniors count on. And according to his Project 2025 agenda. And uh, Trump said that he's not going to even tax Social Security and all this other stuff. It's like no tax on tips. You know what I'm saying? You might steal that pretty soon. And then here you come with the 2025 agenda. <laughs> Man. He intends to undo our work to bring down prescription drugs, the cost of prescription drugs, and insulin costs. And look, just because they found out about a 2025 agenda, don't mean Trump is going to implement it. He, he don't mean, just because it's out there, don't mean that he's going to just ride with that. Y'all automatically putting that on him when another, when another entity wrote that 920-page document. Trump didn't write that. 
And y'all going to say it was presented to him and he agreed and all just because he agreed or read it or act like he didn't know. Don't mean that that man got to run on that. He running on policies that American citizens want to know about. That's the economy, immigration, all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So just because Project 2025 is out there, he didn't write that. It was a, the Heritage Foundation wrote that. He don't have to agree with it, but they want to keep putting it on him. You know what I'm saying? Well, we've come too far to let that happen. So we're not going back on that, and let's talk about the cost of housing. So now, the housing market can be complicated, but look, I'm not new to this issue. As state attorney general, I drafted and helped pass a homeowner bill of rights, one of the first in America. And during the foreclosure crisis, I took on the big banks for predatory lending with many of my colleagues, including Roy Cooper, and won $20 billion for California families when I was attorney general. For real? Because I tried to buy a house and uh, the Asians were coming and buying everything. They was buying everything. I thought I was going to have the American dream. Where's my part of the $20 billion at? Where's the receipts, Kamala? With that stupid look on your face again. Where's my, where my part of that $20 billion you talking about? Because I am in California. Was nowhere in the in nowhere where you can find and say you can get a part of this money because you couldn't get a house. You want to talk about all this stuff, but you ain't talking about your real record. Your real stuff that you stood for in California. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. how to fight for people who are being exploited in the housing market. And I know what home ownership means. It's more than a financial transaction. It's so much more than that. It's more than a house. Home ownership and what that means, it's a symbol of the pride that comes with hard work. I worked hard. I worked hard for years and I still couldn't get me a house. I had all the credentials. I had everything. My credit score was good. Everything I had the down payment, everything. And I still couldn't get one. You feel me? That's why I'm looking so serious right now because I still couldn't get one, but you fought for $20 billion dollars. To help out. Where's my cut at? Kamala. Where's my cut? Just gaslighting, boy. Gaslighter. Ooh. Lord. It's financial security. It represents what you will be able to do for your children. And sadly, right now, it is out of reach for far too many American families. There's a serious housing shortage. In many places, it's too difficult to build, and it's driving prices up. As president, I will work in partnership with industry to build the housing we need both to rent and to buy. We will take down barriers and cut red tape including at the state and local levels what about housing for the homeless they need houses too you know what i'm saying we all one paycheck from being out on to, to for being out on the streets we one paycheck away from that because of your high inflation 
What about what about that? Look at that black man in the back. Look at him. It's a damn shame. And by the end of my first term, we will end America's housing shortage by building three million new homes and rentals that are affordable for the middle class. The middle class. The middle class. You're not even talking about the lower class. The middle class. That's what your focus is on, the middle class. We got a lot of different classes of people. And I'm quite sure all those different classes will appreciate a new house or something to live in. But you focus on the middle class with that dumb look on your face. And we will do that together. We will do that together. Look at them two black people over there, that bald-headed black woman with that green thing on her arm and that man with that red bow tie, that red bow tie, knowing damn well they ain't middle class. Damn well they ain't middle class. And they ain't finna get one of them houses. This is all for show. It might be an AI generated crowd behind her. Because that don't even look real. <laughs> anyway, man. Let's keep going. And, and we will make sure those homes actually go to working and middle class Americans. So when they built, I'm going to go and apply for one. I'm an actual working class, middle class, lower class, whatever. I'm actually working. I've been working my job for 14, 15 years, and I work hard. So when they go on the market and I apply for one, you said you're going to actually make sure that I get one. Or is it for the $20 million Illegal aliens is coming up in here that don't have credit scores because you're going to have to have a credit score to get that house. You know what I'm saying? Is, is it for them? Is it for them? I want to know. Let me know, Kamala. Not just investors. Because, you know, some corporate landlords, some of them, buy dozens if not hundreds of houses and apartments. Then they turn them around and rent them out at extremely high prices. And it can make it impossible then for regular people to be able to buy or even rent a home. Some corporate landlords collude with each other to set artificially high rental prices often using algorithms in price-fixing software to do it. It's anti-competitive, and it drives up costs. I will fight for a law that cracks down on these practices. We also know that as the price of housing has gone up, the size of down payments have gone up as well. Even if aspiring homeowners save for years, it often still is not enough. So in addition, while we work on the housing shortage, my administration will provide first-time home buyers with $25,000 to help with the down payment on a new home. $25,000. So those houses must going to be like studio apartments or something. $25,000. So we're going to do the math. If you're going to build 3 million new affordable homes and you're giving $25,000 for a down payment, uh, let's see what that is. 
That's seventy five billion with a B dollars. That's going to be added to the national debt. Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay that twenty five thousand? Is it going to come from the big businesses or the small businesses who made more money than what they were supposed to make that the government said they were supposed to make and be penalized for? Is that where it's coming from? Or is it coming from the taxpayers' money? $25,000. That's $75 billion. Or is that money or is those houses are going to go towards illegal immigrants or migrants, illegal migrants? Because you got that border open for a reason, Kamala. And it's more than just democratic votes. If people credit is messed up, first time buyers, they, they do have a credit score, right? <clears throat> $25,000. On a what, uh, like a three hundred thousand dollar home? Don't you need that? Don't you need like ten percent or something like that? That still ain't gonna be enough money. Some people ain't got ten thousand dollars in their bank account to put with that twenty five thousand or whatever it is. So your mortgage is gonna be skyrocketing out the roof because you ain't got enough money to put on a down payment. That twenty five thousand, it'd be good. But what about if you want a, a, a six hundred thousand dollar home or a million dollar home, and you're a first time buyer? But the bottom line is, who's going to pay for that twenty five thousand dollars per person who's trying to get a, a new house? The tax paying citizens. So you still giving stuff for free that us as U S. tax paying citizens have to pay for. You still add known to the debt. You ain't talking about nothing about lowering the debt. You know, with energy and different things like that, you're not talking about, you still talking about spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money. You're talking about capping food prices. It's going to cause food shortages. You know what I'm saying? You, you're just constantly giving away money. That's the problem that we are in right now. That two, three, two, three trillion dollars and all this stuff and spending. The country, we don't have money. Our, the dollar is not even worth a dollar anymore. But you steadily talking about giving away money. Clearing up, uh, paying for everybody's medical expenses. Who's paying for it? We still paying for it. Just because you say you're going to forgive student loans and, and medical bills and give all these people this money, we still got to pay for it, Kamala. It ain't like you saying, okay, we're going to forgive everything and nobody got to pay for it. We ain't even going to take the taxes out of it to pay for this stuff. It's just, it's just mystery. It's just wiped out mysteriously. Nobody got to pay for nothing, ever. We still got to pay for it, Kamala. You got the dumb look on your face again. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is just the dumbest thing ever. And I don't care what nobody say in the comments, man. Y'all leave y'all comments on how y'all feel about this situation. It doesn't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? You're being gaslighted. If you fall for any of this bull, you're being gaslighted. You're being pandered for your vote. So you can believe this, man. This lady been lying since day one. She can cover up Joe Biden's cognitive ability. She done covered up and lied about the border being secure. All that stuff. And lied about inflation and lied about all kind of stuff. But y'all can keep on believing this. Keep on believing it. Because we're going to have everybody, we all going to still have to pay for this. It just sounds good for right now. It sounds good, but we eventually going to have to pay for this. 
We're going to have to pay for it. It's going to be high ass taxes on everything. So y'all keep believing if you want to. And you can stop lying. All to help more Americans experience the pride of home ownership and the financial security that it represents and brings. Ain't no financial security. Especially when we got to pay all this stuff back. The hard working class people got to pay this back. The hardworking class people like me got to pay all this stuff, all this money that you giving away back. So it's a big contradiction. What if I don't want to, what if I don't want to pay or help pay this $25,000 per person? What if I don't want to help to pay people's medical bills off? What if I don't want to help to pay people's student loans off? What if I don't want to pay anything but take care of me and my family? But your communist ways is going to just take my money and put it to wherever it need to be. My American dream is dwindling every day because you got all these people in here that y'all want to help pay for it to take their vote to just all just to win. Just to win. And people don't understand it's going to be it's just going to be too crazy out here. All those people that said this little rally, whatever you call this economic, whatever. Is going to be suffering as well. So they can sit up here and laugh and joke and, and, and thinking all this stuff is cool, but eventually it's going to hit their pocketbooks too. It ain't going to hit yours because you are a vice president. You, you got millions of dollars and you, you got people's lives in, in, at stake in your hands and trying to make decisions for people. This is why I be hating politics sometimes. This, this is one of the reasons. If I was ever a politician, man, damn sure won't be like this. Anyway, man, let's get to it. So that's, that's my plan. plan. But, but here's what Donald, Donald Trump, Trump would do. What Donald Trump going to do? He going to close our borders? He going to have a mass deportation? Huh? What's wrong with that? Close the borders, have a mass deportation. He's going to stop uh, uh, young gender affirming surgeries. What else he going to stop? Huh? He going to bring he going to bring God back into schools. Is y'all mad about that? Huh? He going to take men out of women's sports and vice versa. Y'all mad about that? Huh? He's going he's going again. He's going with what the Bible says. Huh? Because you can't just do anything that you want and not have consequences. You know what I'm saying? You can't just do whatever you want without ha having consequences. There is a higher power. There is a, a most high. There is a God. The man, he know Donald Trump knows that. He almost got his head taken off. He made one move and it saved his life. But y'all want to pump this agenda out like you could just do whatever you want, joy and and all this stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? We getting back to the wholesome way that it used to be, like normal, normalcy. He wanted he want to take tampons out of little boys' bathrooms. Like, what kind of what kind of world is that? Where you go into a boy's bathroom or man's bathroom and you got a, a, a tampon dispensing machine in there. Boys don't bleed. They don't bleed. Anyway, man, let me get off that, man. That's just crazy. People going to do what they going to do and they got to answer to God for that. So let me hear what you think Donald Trump is going to do. If his Project 2025 agenda is put into effect, 
It will add around $1,200 a year to the typical American mortgage. He's got it backward. We should be. How is it going to add that? And you got interest rates on the house that's through the damn roof. It's through the roof already. Regardless of what you paying for your house, you're going to pay 10 years more because the interest rates are so high. 30 year fix and all this is going to turn to 50 years. You wear about a thousand dollars more and we paying a, we paying two, three thousand dollars more for the food we buying every month because of your high inflation and, and because of your vote. With that dumb look on your face. Anyway, man. We're doing everything we can to make it more affordable to buy a home, not less. Finally, there's one more way I will help families deal with rising costs. And that's by letting you keep more of your hard-earned money. We ain't got no money to keep. We ain't got no money to keep. Everything's so high. We 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 like I said, we making choices whether to eat something or pay a bill. What money you talking about we gonna keep? Under my plan, more than one hundred million Americans will get a tax cut. And we will do this by restoring two tax cuts designed to help middle class and working Americans. Here she go with the middle class. What about the, the lower class? You forgetting all about them. They votes count too, right? So any any lower class people, you see that Kamala or Scamala or Scamala or Chameleon uh, ain't worried about you. Because there's a lot of people that don't have nothing. They're, they're not middle class. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of people that don't have nothing. And their votes count too if they're American citizens. So y'all see this? They worried about the middle class. Not you. The earned income tax credit. And the child tax credit. Millions of Americans with children got to keep more of their hard-earned income. We know this works and has a direct impact on so many issues, including child poverty. We know it works. You ain't even got no kids, so how you know what works? So as president, I'll not only restore that tax cut, but expand it. We will provide $6,000 in tax relief to families during the first year of a child's life. That means one time. Because the tax season is only one time. What about the rest of the kid's life? As a minor. Gaslighting. Now think what that means. Think what that means. That is a vital, vital year of critical development of a child. And the cost can really add up, especially for young parents who need to buy diapers and clothes and a car seat and so much else. And we will do this while reducing the deficit. Compare my plan with what Donald Trump intends to do. He plans to give billionaires massive tax cuts year after year. And he plans to cut corporate taxes by over a trillion dollars, even as they pull in record profits. And that's on top of the $2 trillion tax cut he already signed into law when he was president. Which, by the way, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly went to the wealthiest Americans and corporations and exploded the national deficit. Y'all exploded the national deficit with that dumb look on your face. Sending all them trillions and billions of dollars to these different countries protecting their borders 
and all that. When you got Israel and y'all only want to help Israel, the uh, the uh, United States uh, number one ally. Y'all send all that money over there to Ukraine and you talking about Donald Trump exploding the national debt. And you was the deciding vote. Come on, Kamala. You know, I think that if you want to know who someone cares about, look who they fight for. And we want to know who you care about. Look who you fight for. You fight for just the middle class. You ain't fighting for the lower class people like me. I fight for them. I go out to the streets of Skid Row and give back and do all this stuff. That's the reason why I can't get no help from y'all because y'all too focused on the middle class. So like I like I said before, uh, lower class people, y'all votes count too. And they're focused on the middle class. And I'm not trying to divide anybody, but we're going to call a spade a spade. They focus, the Democrats are focused on just the middle class. So it's a lot more people that's in poverty than there are people that are rich or middle class. So, you know what I'm saying? Just think about that. All right. For billionaires and large corporations, we, I will fight to give money back to working and middle class Americans. She said it again working and middle class America. With that eyeball looking like that, they missing out on a whole demographic of people. They wouldn't want me to run for office because I had a, a lower class, middle class, and the rich class voting for me. Because I ain't leaving nobody left behind. Just like the Democrat did when they when they uh, left Afghanistan and left all that $85 billion worth of equipment and those 13 poor soldiers that lost their lives was left behind. Don't let me guess. Don't let me. Look, this is my first show here at my at the factory, which I call the factory. Papa Z Films Network. Don't let me get started, man. I got a lot of things to say. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of things to say. Talking about somebody being left behind. With that crazy eyeball over there looking like. That's crazy. Anyway, let's go. So I'll end with this. Two days ago, Donald Trump was here in North Carolina. He said he was going to talk about the economy. He said he's going to talk about the economy. Here she go with that fake accent. Boy. I think you all watched. You know what I'm about to say. But he offered no serious plans. He did. Energy. Bring down the cost of energy. Everything is going to have a trickle effect. You need en energy to make everything. Everything needs energy. You ain't said nothing about no energy, Kamala. Common sense to tell you that when energy costs come down, inflation comes down. You talking about giving away everything for free. And that's going to raise the cost of taxpaying citizens paying more taxes to help everybody else. Helping people that are that don't want to do nothing, that want everything in handouts and all that. We got to pay all that back, Kamala. You ain't talking nothing. You're talking about giving everybody a handout. And then you're talking about the government controlling everything. You make too much money, you're going to get penalized. You're talking about building 3 million affordable homes and giving everybody $25,000 to be able to afford the down payment. Who's going to pay all that back? You ain't even talking about nothing. You ain't talking about bringing nothing down. 
You talking about continuing to raise in, to raise inflation, interest rates, and the deficit going through the roof. Donald Trump talking about bringing the cost of energy down, drill, baby, drill. He talking about getting all these illegal people up out of here and come back. If you want to come to this country, you need to come legally, not illegally. He's talking about taking away all this stuff that we're paying for the home, the homes, uh, uh, health care, child care, free food, hotel. We paying for all of this. Taxpaying citizens. You ain't talking about nothing, Kamala. Nothing. You're going to destroy America like you destroyed California. And I live in California. I'm about ready to move up out of here, too, just like all the businesses. And people are really waking up to see that it's too high to live over here. It's too much. It's too much. But you want to sit there with that little grin and do, you know what I'm saying? Just it, it just irked my nerves to look at your forehead. It, it, it irks my nerves. You full of it. Let's go, man. To reduce costs for middle class families. No. Middle class, reduce costs for middle class. She keep on saying that middle class. <laughs> Boy. Plan to expand access to housing or health care. And that, actually, I think for most of us, was not surprising. Because we already know his plans. We know the Project 2025 agenda. Why you, why you keep talking about he going to do the 2025? The man, he don't have to accept that. Somebody else wrote that 920-page thing. Just because they had a video of somebody... Uh, uh, Recording somebody uh, uh, leaking some footage. You can't believe what that man said. Did Donald Trump wasn't sitting there when they was filming that. It was somebody else. And they can say what they want to say. But, but you're going to gaslight the people to make them believe that Trump has something to do with that. Or that man talking about Trump. This, we, look, just because he said that don't mean that Trump is going to accept that. You know what I'm saying? He not. What about all the lawfare that y'all put on this man? Because he wanted to run for president again. Talk about that. Talk about all the, 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 the weaponization of the legal system. Talk about that. I would be mad too if somebody trying to put me in jail and I hadn't and I wasn't and, and, and I ain't involved in none of that. Like I would be mad too. I'll be mad if somebody put you in the position and then give the Democrat a primary to, to see if they wanted you or not. But they just going to throw you on people's laps and say, this is what y'all need to vote for. I would be mad, too, if I know that these countries and these, these Muslim countries and all these other countries don't respect women like that. You're going to have to deal with Kim Jong-un. You're going to have to deal with Putin. You're going to have to deal with President Xi and everybody else. And you want to talk about joy and all this stuff. Them people don't give a damn about no damn joy. So anyway, let me keep this going. So there's a choice in this election. Donald Trump's plans to devastate the middle class. Middle class, devastate the middle class. Here they keep on talking about the middle class. The middle class has already been devastated due to high inflation, due to all these migrants, due to all our tax money being paid for these people, due to uh, canceling student debt, with that somebody got to pay for due to all this free stuff that you think is just going to be free and that, 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 that like the American citizens ain't going to have to pay for it. We got somebody got to pay for this. You ain't got no solutions on anything. You just riding high off this honeymoon period. That's really going to come 
that's going to that's gonna really crash. Because as soon as they get you in front of somewhere where you can have a real interview instead of you and Walls uh, interviewing each other, because I've seen that, y'all interviewing each other. Your own party don't want to put you in front of uh, the liberal media. Some of the liberal media is really waking up to this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It's been 27, 28 days, and you still ain't did no press conference. So you can keep on gaslighting American citizens if you want to. Eventually, all them people that's behind you, standing right there behind you with their cell phones out, and the bald head black man right there, that girl, that black girl on the other side, she been looking serious. She like really listen. She probably realizing that this is a bunch of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? She probably realizing that. And she look young. All them little young kids, they don't know what the hell you talking about. They really don't. But you can keep on gaslighting people if you want to, Kamala. Punish working people and make the cost of living go up for millions of Americans. And on the other hand, when I'm elected president. You talking about cost of living go up for millions of Americans. The cost of living been up. It's been up three and a half years. The cost of living been up. Talking about he want to make it up. You y'all made it that way for three and a half years. Why you keep trying to blame him for something that y'all did? This is dumb. What we'll do. What we will do to bring down costs, increase the security and stability financially of your family and expand opportunity for working and middle class Americans. Working and middle class. Here you go again. You go again with that dumb look on your face. So now, now, now is the time to chart a new way forward. Now is the time to chart a new way forward. To build. So you throwing Joe Biden up under the bus? It's time to chart a new way forward. <laughs> Just like that saying you used to say something about burden with burden with Ben Burton, whatever you used to say. You ain't come look, look, look. I'm gonna end it right here. Look. <clears throat> Kamala, you not fooling nobody. You ain't fooling nobody. You want to play these games. You want to say all this new stuff. And your record, since your whole political career, been the far left, the left, you're more left than uh, Bernie Sanders. You had radical ways. You even said, uh, I'm radical. Yeah, I'm radical. But all of a sudden, you want to be this whole changed person. You didn't raise your hands plenty of times when it was questioned, was asked about how you feel about certain situations. You know what I'm saying? We know your record. It's all, we have all receipts and videos of you saying everything that you are opposing right now. You felt this way. I got, like I said, I got a video that's showing how you, like your pops and everybody was, you know, you, you was raised communist you know what I'm saying you was raised with that red dot on your forehead you not black you know how to like you want to pander to the black vote you want to pull out a, a, a southern accent you did that in this little press conference right here you know what I'm saying you are you are a, a paid actor I'm gonna just say it. you a paid actor Reading a script, which is the teleprompters. You push your boss out. The man that you was actually supporting for three and a half years. 
all your words came back to hunt you. Now you want to try to switch everything up. Like you didn't, I didn't mean none of that. Or that was this and that. Like, no, you just recently said a lot of this stuff. But you see that the American citizens are not really happy about your position. So you got to reinvent yourself. Where did all this come from? You just doing this to try to win in an election? You doing all this to try to win an election. God knows. He knows. He knows what's good for the American people and the world. All this agenda pushing mess and all this nonsense like you can't do as thou wilt. Ain't that what Al Alistair Crawley used to say? Do as thou wilt. No, you have to answer. You can't just do what you want to do without consequences. It's something bigger here than you. And it's more powerful than a Democratic or a Republican Party or Independent Party. You have a higher power, the most high, the Holy Spirit, all of this, all of these things. You look across the world, you have red heifers. If anybody know about that, look that up. It's a lot of things going on. We have a spiritual war going on right now. It's either, it's, he's talking about it's two different sides. The two different sides is, are you with God or are you not with God? You have one party that's coming closer to God and you have one party that's walking further away from God. That's what it's about. Now, anybody looking at this video or this reaction, what side are you on? You gonna people are gonna make the the choices and the decisions that they make. I'm not here to to downplay anything that anybody does, but what I'm here to do is that you here to say is that you have to answer to God. You either want everlasting life or you want to burn in that lake of fire. Which one do you want to do? Which one do you want to do? You know what I'm saying? So leave down in the comments, man, how y'all feel about this uh, economic plan by Kamala Harris. You know what I'm saying? If you think it's, if you think it's cool, you know what I'm saying? Or if you think it's not, I, I advise you guys to do your research on communist party type of situations like just do your research you know what i'm saying and if you like this type of content man this is my first reaction uh doing it like this i normally just make a long form video but man this is my first reaction man if y'all like what i'm doing man leave that in the comments man y'all leave a thumbs up man subscribe to the channel we on the road to 50k you know what i'm saying we here in the factory man papa z films network all right, man. All my mods, man. All my subscribers, man. I love y'all, man. Y'all tap in. And like I always say, man, y'all protect yourself at all times. Keep your head on the swivel. God bless you. God bless me all the time, man. And God bless America. And I'm out. Papa Z, peace. God bless America. Gotta let you know what's up. God bless America. Are you sleep or are you up? God bless America. Trying to hit you with the news. God bless America. Don't be no dummy, you're a fool. God bless America. I gotta let them know what's up. God bless America.